Welcome back to Hassie Photography. So, I got some good stuff for you today. Uh, I covered a lot of ground last time. Some of it is really in depth and some of it was pretty elementary. Uh, I'm gonna keep trudging along those, or trudging, trudging, trudging? I'm gonna keep going on those same lines. So, here's a few things that we are going to talk about today and I'm actually going to insert some photos with examples along the way so that you can see exactly what I'm referring to or what I'm talking about. So, first thing we'll talk about is the flash and or the lighting. Um, what I will tell you is that it does not have to be a dark room or dark outside to use your flash. During the daytime, when you are taking a photo, that flash on that camera will do an outstanding job of lighting up the face of whoever, whoever it is that you're taking a photograph of. And one of the things that I see a lot of with Facebook or Instagram photography is, or what I call smartphone photography, is having the subject uh, stand in a location where the sun is hitting them in the face, and you'll notice that their eyes will be squinty or they won't be able to have a natural smile because they've got all this light in their eyes. And what we're gonna do is we are going to reorient in that same situation to put the sun behind the person that you're taking a photograph of. My dogs are going crazy again. Um, that's not me, that is the dogs. It's always the dogs. So anyway, um, we're gonna orient so that the sun is behind the person you're taking a photograph of, and so then their eyes can be wide open. And if the front of their body is not lit up well enough, if you're just in a position where you're not getting enough light, then use your flash during the daytime. It'll work great. You'll be amazed at how awesome it will improve your photographs. So that's, uh, that's guideline number one, tip number one for you today. Next one we're gonna talk about is the angle of your photograph or the orientation of your, um, or really the perspective of the photograph. And so what I'll do is I'll show you a few different photographs here where you can see the different angles that we could take all for the most part really oriented in about the same location. And you can see this is my French Bulldog. This is Wilson. He knows how to sit. Briggs just knows how to chew and fart. So that's why he doesn't get to be in all my photos. But Wilson does. So you can see here in this first photograph, we've got a picture of Wilson oriented or really given from the perspective of my height as a, you know, as a human. So you can see it's angled straight down and you can see what we get with that picture. And go to any Facebook page you want where they have pictures of dogs and you will see a bazillion photographs like this one, okay? Next photograph we're gonna take, I am going to take from the same angle as he walks around. Now he's a little short puppy, so his angle is definitely, um, yeah, we're only, we're talking 12 inches, 16 inches off the floor here, but check out the background. Check out the perspective. Look how much more cool stuff is in the photograph. I mean, it's clearly still a photo of the dog, but look at all the cool stuff that's there too. So um, you can see that just changing a little bit of the angle makes a pretty big difference in the photograph. And then this last one, you can see this is actually angled up. So we're angling from below the dog's level, or really all the way down at the floor, angling up or skyward to pick the dog up along the way. Um, in each one of these, I'm gonna follow the rules of thirds, like I talked about in the first video, and I'm gonna try to ensure that I'm working on getting decent lighting. Um, although you'll see that in all these examples, the lighting is, is really gonna show up different in each one of these, and I haven't changed a thing. It's just the perspective. So again, f figuring out well, how is the light hitting your subject? Is it coming from the top down? Is it coming from the side? Is it coming from behind? All these things are gonna give you a different, um, you know, a hugely different photograph as you can see here. And then the last thing that I wanna give as a tip for everybody is um, where do we focus? And Liz, can I see your phone real quick for just one second? Um, so when we're taking a photograph, the last thing that I'll mention here about focus is I wanna talk about focusing in on your subject's eyes. And 99.9% .9 of the time, if there's a place to focus on, um, on a picture or a, or a subject, the eyes are the most important thing that you wanna get in the image. So what I'm gonna do in a, 
um, situation where I'm going to be getting a picture of someone or something, and I'm, let me grab a let me grab a model here. Come here, Chubby. We're going to use Wilson as our model. What we're going to do is if we hold up the phone and put whoever it is in the photo that we're looking to get a photograph of, we're going to touch the screen where we want to focus. And with Wilson, we're going to just touch right on his eye. And that should give us the best chance to get a really good photo. So one-handed, free hand here, I'm going to focus in on his eye, and then I'm going to try to snap a photo. And I'm not sure if that's going to work. Let me try again here. I'll try to put him up here on the left-hand side of the image. Snap another photo. Using the, I'm using the volume to be able to pull that photo up. But what you can see here is that, uh, or it's a snap photo, excuse me. Here's a really good example of what could have been a really good photo. But notice the quality of Wilson's eye is awful. This photo just goes right to the trash. Not even uh, worth salvaging. And in this photo, I can't even see his eye. So even though we might have a cool background and all kinds of cool stuff going on, if we don't get the subject eyes in the photo, um, oftentimes we end up with something that's just complete garbage and we have to throw it out. So um, that's the last tip I have for you is focusing in on your subject's eyes. So to recap real quick, one last time, make sure that I got all this stuff out. Um, we want to focus in on the lighting and the flash during the daytime so that you have that. We're going to practice different angles, so angling up or down or below um, or straight at. We'll try a few different angles working on the background, continuing again from video number one, the angle of thirds. And then lastly, we're going to really work on focusing on the eyes of the subject. So with that, a little fun here. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video, congratulations. This is way longer than I anticipated it being. But here's what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask anybody who follows this to try it. Take a photo with your smartphone tonight or tomorrow or whenever you see this and go to my Facebook page, Hassett Photography, John Hassett Photography. Uh, Hassett Photography on Instagram or John Hassett. Was it HassettPhotography.com? Go to any of those places. Send me a picture. Uh, send me a picture that you took with your smartphone or actually comment in the comments of this video on Facebook with a picture you took. I don't care what it's of. Just take something cool and try to follow these, you know, follow these guidelines and see if it improved anything within your, your photography. So with that, look forward to seeing you again. I'll be bringing more content soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and thanks for sharing. Talk to you soon.